So I'm Kota Weno, Senior Associate at Building Science Corporation. Uh, for those you know, who don't know, BSC is Dr. Joe Stebrook's company, one of the big building scientists out there. Um, you know, basically, I'm one of Joe's minions. And Joe is very often fond of saying that failure made me the person that I am. Uh, specifically, what we do is we often look at building enclosure or shell failures, typically moisture related, uh, we'll learn what we can from them, and we try to spread the building science news on that front and basically uh, you know, increase the body of knowledge on that based on the problems that we've seen. So this is just one segment from what I'm going to be talking about in terms of the building science of the lid, attics, roofs, all that, um, specifically talking about SIPs. So SIPs are structural insulated panel system. They're a pretty clever system where you have two OSB skins with a layer of foam in between. They're all glued together and they form a uniform structural panel. You can get a whole lot of strength out of them. Um, you can, um, you know, you also get some incredible air tightness, great R values. Um, if you have that crane on site, you can put them together very quickly. Um, they have a lot of pluses going for them, but there are also some moisture related issues that do occur with them. So moving on to that. Um, so the, one of the biggest case studies of problems with SIPs was the Juneau, Alaska failure. Um, this was investigated a bunch of years ago. Juneau, Alaska is a cold climate, 8,600 heating degree days. To put that in context, Boston is about 5,000 heating degree days. So it's pretty cold, it's pretty wet, it's cloudy, it's dark all the time. So they built these houses out of SIPs, including a SIPs roof. Um, you know, basically because it goes together so fast and because the, you know, the building season is so short. You know, this is one of those spots like in Canada where they have, you know, the two seasons are, you know, winter and road building season. Um, so they knew that they started to have some problems with these roofs when they were up there doing maintenance. And they started to see mushrooms growing out of the shingle laps. That's you know, definitely not a good sign for building durability when you start growing edible things out of your building enclosure. So digging in a little bit more, they started to strip back the shingles and the building paper, you know, and this was not a bulk water leak. You know, none of the, you know, if you look at these types of roofs, these are, these are dirt, simple, boring shed roofs. These are, you know, if you have a roof leaking in, in one of these, it's going to be at that chimney or one of these funky roof lines, but in the middle of the, of the ridge, probably not. So what are they seeing? There is, you know, soaking wet oriented strand board sheathing, bad enough that you could poke your finger through it. It's pretty much turned into oatmeal. Um, and then, you know, digging in a li little bit more, stripping back more of the roof, you actually get to see a bit more of the pattern where, you know, you get to a panel joint. Huh, that is where things are really wet and nasty and slimy and having problems. Um, you know, this thing is, you know, they tried to do a decent job sealing it up, but apparently it was not enough. So let's go ahead and strip the roof back a little bit more. And what you see is the actual damage pattern. So the worst damage is occurring all along that ridge, the top of the building, um, and also kind of stretching down along the panel joints in between each panel, going down each side. You get to the middle of the panel, you know, where there's you know, no joint or anything, things are pretty much fine. So what's the failure that's going on here? Well, to understand, you have to understand how these SIPs panels are put together. So you have to have these, you know, the panels are craned in, um, and then they are joined together by those slots and those pieces of plywood that you see called splines. Um, those are joined together there, um, structurally fastened to make it into one monolithic hole. And then you inject drill holes every roughly eight inches on center and inject foam into it. Um, However, you are requiring perfection from a crew working on the outside whenever, you know, when it's rainy, cold, damp, all those conditions that are an actual real construction site. So what you end up with, you end up with imperfections, of course. So this diagram down here shows kind of the network of paths that stuff can happen. So you have your air on the interior. It's gonna be warm and humid in winter relatively compared to outside. It can get into that joint. 
um, pop, you know, find an imperfection over in a, in a panel joint where you possibly didn't seal that foam perfectly, get around that spline and get to the underside of that OSB sheathing on the outside of the panel. At that point, remember, this is winter. The sheathing is going to be pretty cold. You'll have moisture condensation. And on the outside of your roof, you have tar paper and shingles. Not much is going to be able to dry out through that. So you basically end up with those soaking wet joints. And also that water just kind of wicks laterally or capillary transfer, basically the oriented strand board acting like a sponge going sideways. Um, and the other thing that makes this really tricky is you can do a perfect job of air sealing the outside, you can do, you know, you can basically get, come in with a great blower door air leakage test, nail all your numbers, and you can still have problems. So this just shows what can happen is if you have a great air barrier, a great airtight layer on the outside, but you have misses on the inside, what you can have is that interior warm, moist air gets up into that seam, hits that cold layer, chills down, cools down, exits from the inside. So no inside to outside air leak, but you still have that condensation and moisture problem. Um, so this type of a massive rot problem is not the only thing you can see. I've also seen plenty of cases of what's called shingle ridging. So what usually happens is come winter time, you know, you start, go to the north side of the roof and you start to see this outline of every single SIPS panel. Uh, you know, the, sh the shingles are kind of buckling up. What's going on is that wood changes moisture content seasonally. When it's cold and it's wet outside, that wood is going to expand. So when you go from dry installation conditions with a gap and then come winter, everything expands, you end up with that little buckle in between. So that happens seasonally. Every winter, it buckles. Every summer, it you know unbuckles. You know, not a massive problem, possibly a little bit of a durability issue over time just from moving around. So you can also use a blower door test to try to diagnose what's going on. Um, and, you know, you know, and so, you know, so this was a blower door test that I was running when things were hot and humid outside. Um, the problems usually occur where it's a tricky joint. So you can see they did a very nice tape joint between the panels over, you know, in the field of the roof. But then when it goes up above that ridge beam, yep, you suck in the air from outside and you can see that air leaking in there. Similar thing where you have that ridge beam pocket sitting there and other details like that. So if I was building, if I were building a SIPS house, you know, from here, one of the key things is to make sure that you have some type of a bomb proof air barrier on the interior. The best way that I can think of to do it is you put in a tape joint on the underside, for instance, at a ridge beam where it's going to be inaccessible, set the panels and then push that tape in place. Is that a pain in the butt? Will your SIPS guys complain? Absolutely. But that's, better than relying on a faith-based blind injection of foam and hoping that lasts for the rest of the life of the building. Then again, if the building fails, maybe that will be the rest of the life of the building. Um, the other thing is that, um, you know, you know, if you want it to be extra safe, one very nice way to do that is, ugh, I'll put a vented overroof on where you have an air cavity and a permeable layer that lets the moisture at the outside face of the OSB dry into that cavity and whisk away. Um, and you know, basically that give, you know, instead of being completely locked in moisture from the tar paper and shingles, you do have outward drying through that vented air cavity running from the bottom to the top of the roof. Um, and I think that's about it for slides. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hand it off to um, any of our other, our next insight presenter.